It's 6 p.m. here in Korea. Welcome to the newscast. I'm Daniel Che. In addition to being included on Song Wan-jung's bribery list, Prime Minister Lee wan gu is now dealing with the fallout of Song's interview with a local newspaper. In it, Song said he gave the Prime Minister political funds two years ago. He strongly denies all allegations. Korea's National Assembly passed a parliamentary resolution denouncing Japan's recent approval of school textbooks containing claims to the Korea-controlled Tokdo Island. And at the National Assembly, Defense Minister Han Min-gu highlighted North Korea's advancements in nuclear weapons capability and explained that is just one of many defense upgrade options for South Korea. We start with the bribery list scandal that's shaking Korea's political landscape to its core. Prime Minister Lee wan gu faced another round of allegations Tuesday after a local newspaper reported additional details from an interview with businessman Song wan jung that took place before his apparent suicide last week. Song told the paper that he gave E political funds two years ago. Our Choi yoo Sun reports on the Prime Minister's response. Prime Minister Lee wan gu says he will be the first to be questioned by prosecutors over allegations he received bribes from Song wan jung a former lawmaker and head of Gyeongnam Enterprises. If there's evidence of me receiving bribery from him, I should step down. But it's not true. He also denied reports published in a local daily, the Gyeongyang Shinmun, in which Sung claimed he delivered 30 million won, or some 27,000 U.S. dollars, to E before by-elections in April of 2013. Sung was found dead last Thursday, carrying a list and naming eight current and former politicians, along with amounts of money. The prime minister was on the list, as well as the president's chief of staff, Yi Byung-gi, but no specific amount was written beside their names. As investigators dig into Sung's suspicious money exchanges, Yi may become the country's first prime minister to be questioned by prosecutors. They're also looking into claims that Sung kept a secret ledger of the bribes. President Buck on Sunday called for the prosecution to conduct an impartial probe according to law and principles. Asked about the Kyungyang report, President Buck's spokesperson said there's nothing the presidential office can say and that it's time to wait for the outcome of the prosecution's investigation. Ruling party floor leader Yu Seung Min said his party's Supreme Council agreed the prosecution should start questioning the prime minister. Opposition party leader Moon Jae-in, meanwhile, called on both the prime minister and the presidential chief of staff to voluntarily step down and submit to prosecutor questioning. Choi yoo Sun, Arirang News. And Gyeongnam Enterprises, the company at the center of the bribery scandal, will be delisted from the benchmark cost beyond Wednesday. The company's stock trading was suspended last month after years of continuous losses. Our Shin Zemin tells us more. It has been 42 years since Gyeongnam Enterprises went public, making it the first Korean construction company on the country's stock exchange. But that legacy stops this Wednesday, as the company will be delisted from the market due to mounting debts. A slump in the local housing market helped to put the cash-strapped company in the red in recent years, posting some 280 million U.S. dollars worth of losses in 2013 and 166 million the following year. The construction company had been going through a corporate debt workout program for some time, but its stock was in the process of being terminated after creditors rejected the company's request for additional financial support last month. The company also failed an attempt to go into court receivership. During its heyday in the 1990s, Gyeongnam stock peaked at $205. On Tuesday, the company's last day on the exchange, stocks were traded at just 10 U.S. cents, plunging nearly 45 percent from the day before. Although Gyeongnam is leaving the market, it was the first local construction company to develop its business in overseas markets in 1965. The builder began international work in Thailand, then expanded to Sri Lanka, Cameroon, Malaysia, and even to the Middle East in the 1970s. Gyeongnam Enterprises is now at the heart of a political scandal as its late chairman Song wan jung committed suicide while facing investigation for pocketing overseas resource investment funds during former President Lee myung baks administration. A note found on his body named eight prominent politicians and listed amounts of money, allegedly bribes. 
Shin Se-min, Arirang News. And we move over to the National Assembly where a continuing controversy over the bribery list scandal dominated Tuesday's interpolation session. Our Park ji -won reports. Korea's foreign unification and defense ministers, as well as Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu, all attended the second day of interpolation sessions on diplomatic and security issues. However, a large portion of the session has been directed at grilling Prime Minister Lee over the bribery allegations. How can prosecutors independently investigate heavyweight figures like Prime Minister and the Presidential Chiefs of Staff? Aren't they the ones making personal decisions about prosecutors? Thus, the introduction of special prosecution is mandatory. I agree that the investigation should be thorough, and if Parliament approves a special prosecution, I will accept the investigation. The prime minister even said during the session that he would put his life on the line if there's evidence of bribery allegations. Besides the time spent on the bribery scandal, the session covered a wide range of security, diplomatic and inner Korean issues. Regarding the controversial possible deployment of the U.S.'s anti-ballistic missile system, known as the THAAD, Defense Minister Han Mingu said it is one of the options to counter North Korean threats, adding that Korea is developing its own missile shield called the Korean Air and Missile Defense. Eradicating corruption in the nation's defense procurement system was also discussed. Uh, Despite the government's numerous efforts to root out corruption in the nation's defense industry, why are corruption cases so rampant in this area? Due to special features of defense projects, many of them proceed in secret, and most contracts between the military and defense businesses are carried out in bilateral monopoly, leaving plenty of room for corruption. The Assembly's interpolation sessions will continue until Thursday, moving on to focus on the economy, education and social and cultural matters. Park ji -won, Arirang News. We move away from the bribery scandal for now. South Korea's defense chief says North Korea may have made significant progress in miniaturizing its nuclear weapons, considering that its first nuclear test was back in 2006. Speaking at the National Assembly's interpolation session on Tuesday, Defense Minister Han Min-gu said other countries have successfully miniaturized nuclear weapons in the seven years following the first nuclear test. The defense chief said Pyongyang has secured about 40 kilograms of plutonium after conducting three nuclear tests and is reportedly developing nuclear weapons using uranium. North Korea's most recent nuclear test took place in the year 2013. Korea's National Assembly has adopted a parliamentary resolution on Tuesday condemning Japan for its repeated claims over Korea's Tokyo Island and its attempts to distort history. Our Kim Young gil has this report. The parliamentary resolution that passed at Tuesday's plenary session denounced Tokyo's recent approval of more Japanese school textbooks containing claims to the Korea-controlled Tokyo Island. The Korean people, the National Assembly and the Foreign Ministry need to work together in order to foster a systematic approach to counter Japan's provocations over Korea's Tokyo Island and distorting history. The resolution urged the Japanese government to withdraw its approval of all textbooks that say Tokyo Island belongs to Japan, calling the books a clear violation of Korea's territorial sovereignty. The resolution raised concerns that the distorted and fabricated history textbooks will cause strife between future generations in Korea and Japan. The assembly also expressed regret over Japan's double standard attitude. Tokyo had said it would work with Seoul to mark the 50th anniversary of diplomatic normalization between the two countries. However, recent events, such as the textbook approvals, indicate an unwillingness to recognize history and Korean sovereignty. The resolution also warned that already frayed relations between Seoul and Tokyo will be further impaired by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's continued visits to the Yasukuni War Shrine and Japan's refusal to take responsibility for the sexual enslavement of Korean women during World War II. Jim Young-gil, Arirang News. 
President Park says she hopes to increase cooperation with Hungary in persuading North Korea to change and choose a path toward development. Meeting with visiting Hungarian President Heinius Adher on Tuesday, she said the North should realize it cannot develop with nuclear weapons and should take note of Hungary's success once it shook off communism. The two leaders also agreed to merge Hungary's advanced science and technology with Korea's manufacturing and production technologies to pursue innovation in IT, auto parts and biopharmaceutical industries. Welcoming the visiting Ethiopian president, President Bak discussed the two sides' initiative to build a joint textile and apparel complex in the African country. Finally, Korea and Japan held their first high-level security talks in more than five years. The so-called 2 plus 2 meeting was held at Seoul's foreign ministry Tuesday with two senior defense and foreign affairs officials from each country. The talks were led by Lee sang duk director of Northeast Asian Affairs at the foreign ministry, and his Japanese counterpart, Junichi Ihara. A broad range of regional issues were on the agenda, including the current status of security policy and cooperation between the two countries. Japan is also expected to have explained the revised U.S.-Japan defense guideline to Korea. The talks were suspended since the last meeting in late 2009 due to strained bilateral relations over historical and territorial issues. Korea's slowing economy is casting a cloud over previous growth predictions. The LG Economic Research Institute says Korea's economy will likely grow 3% on year this year, down from its 3.3% advance in 2014. The think tank cited slowing exports and weak domestic consumption as factors in its revised forecast. The Bank of Korea, too, revised its growth outlook for this year to 3.1 percent from its earlier projection of 3.4. Foreign investment banks like Nomura and French bank BNP Paribas have already lowered their growth forecast to 2.5 percent and 2.7 percent, respectively. The stock market rally here in Korea is putting smiles on a lot of faces. According to local conglomerate tracker Chebel.com, 24 individuals in Korea currently hold more than 1 trillion won, roughly 910 million U.S. dollars, in stock assets. Among the beneficiaries of the Cosby's recent bull run is the owner of cosmetics giant Amore Pacific, Seok Young Bae, whose company stocks have jumped nearly 54 percent since the start of the year, standing at roughly $8.5 billion as of Monday. His number two after Samsung Group chairman Lee Gun Hee, who holds more than $11.2 billion in stocks. Others on the list include the chairman of Merit's Financial Group, whose equities grew over 40 percent in the same period, and Jung Mung Jun, the largest stakeholder of Hyundai Heavy Industries. The benchmark Cosby topped the 2,100-point landmark for the first time in nearly four years on Tuesday. Some positive developments. Korea's Arirang 3A satellite is successfully sending footage from space. On Tuesday, the science ministry released several clear photos taken from the satellite at different points in its orbit. The photos include images of Seoul and Mount Baekdu in North Korea. The satellite's infrared camera is capable of taking photos at any given time. The Arirang 3A will be in orbit for four and a half years, and its tasks include monitoring the environment and analyzing climate change. The Korean government is stepping up safety checks in response to calls for tighter inspection and handling of entertainment facilities, which have been prone to man-made disasters recently. Our cultural correspondent Kim ji Hyun reports. Safety first. That sentiment has gripped the nation after a series of shocking disasters over the past year. A family of five, including three children, died at a camping site last month when their tent caught on fire. Sixteen people fell to their deaths while watching an outdoor concert on top of a ventilation grate that collapsed, dropping them 25 meters. And of course, the tragic Serhul Ferry incident that killed more than 300 people, mostly high school students. Many believe that systematic safety checks could have decreased or prevented the severity of these tragedies. Now the government is starting to take a proactive approach to disaster prevention. The culture minister is inspecting the safety standards of entertainment facilities, like this camping site, ahead of the first public safety day to be marked on Thursday. 
Currently, there are an estimated 1,900 outdoor camping facilities in Korea, with more opening and the numbers are growing rapidly. Some are even equipped with refrigerators and heating systems, but many of them lack adequate safety equipment such as fire extinguishers and hoses due to their unconventional settings. The cultural minister Kim Jong-dok says that's going to change. Outdoor facilities will be subject to periodic safety inspections and the Tourism Promotion Act, which took effect last January. If these measures are not met by next February, those responsible could be held up to two years behind bars or fined about 18,300 U.S. dollars. Kim says his ministry will conduct a nationwide safety inspection of outdoor facilities by the end of the month. Kim Jong, Arirang News. We have come to the end of our newscast. Thank you so much for watching. More coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time.